So, uh, not ideal here. Just been told match has been abandoned. So, Australia have won this game. Therefore, they have won the series. Of course, they leapt into a 2-0 lead with two fantastic performances. And then England bounced back with victories at Durham and at Lords. A mighty victory at Lords the other day. But the rain has curtailed this game. But not before, Ricky. Australia were a long way ahead of the game. Yeah, they were. But when you look at the actual comparison, I mean, we know we have the DLS for a certain reason. When you look at the actual comparison in the game, it was very even. I think there was only three. Australia were three runs ahead, same amount of wickets down. And that's when things really started to change for England. The, you know, the introduction of spin into the attack. Um, and Travis Head's spell, four for 28 that he picked up, is probably one of the more defining moments in this series. We probably won't talk about it much, but when you look back to... What we were talking about in commentary, we were talking about scores of high 400s yeah. there at, at one stage. So it might be one that England might rule a little bit. I know Duckett played beautifully and Brooke played uh, exceptionally well as well. But once they got into that that position of strength, you can't afford to let teams like Australia back into the game, which they did today. And then they did just what they had to do with the bat to ensure that they won the game. How did you view the series as a whole then? 2-0, squared up, 2-2. Fantastic performance from England at Lords. Yeah, I would say really positively for for a, a quite a few reasons you know a lot of the young players that have come in in place of the likes of Butler Stokes Root guys who will come back um top of the order Duckett has been brilliant very difficult to bowl at again another 100 today he's had a magnificent summer so that's a massive tick I see his name being cemented at the top of the order looking ahead to Champions Trophy and World Cups down the line the middle order Harry Brook you know, the, the weight of captaincy hasn't weighed him down whatsoever. So his contributions with the bat were brilliant. I thought he captained uh, the bowlers brilliantly as well in Durham, particularly Jacob Bethel. When nothing was happening, he mustered up tactics and strategy that allowed him to create something from nothing. The fitness of Joffre Archer just keep, continues to impress. Though the spell that he bowled at Lords was super impressive. Just the pace, the accuracy, very intimidating. And when he's firing like that, he, he's one of the best in the world. And there would have been a lot of questions about the workload that he continues to take on. Will he be able to maintain this level of skill with the level of pace? And you know, he's he's come through that test with with flying colours. Um, we were just next door, just chatting about the Champions Trophy down the line and, and jotting down a full-strength England side, fully fit with the likes of Mark Wood, Joffrey Archer in it. The guys in the middle order are probably playing for one position at the moment. That's that's what I had as the strongest team because if Joe Root comes back in three, Harry Brook probably at four, Joss Butler at five, then at six and seven, you have Stokes in one of those positions and then one of Jacob Bethel, Liam Livingston and Jamie Smith. So th that is the reality of what it'll be. There'll be plenty more opportunities in the West Indies and in India early New Year for these guys, but that's what they're fighting for at the moment. So they will ho have hoped that they've made the op most of the opportunity here in this series, but one eye on the Champions Trophy. Who did you have opening? Uh, I had Will Jacks opening with... Uh, ben Duckett. So, unfortunately, Phil Salt missed out. If Josh Butler was adamant that he didn't want to take the gloves, I think it brings Phil Salt back into the equation. I don't think Jamie Smith can go up the order. I wouldn't ask Joe Root to open the batting. Um, you, you could possibly open with Ben Stokes. That could mm. be an option. Um, I see that as a positive one, but it, it looks really strong. Really mm. strong, well-rounded, and it'll be, it should be competitive. Did you have agreement? Was there consensus in that? We well, so had a good chat about it, yeah. About about because when you, what would you, you do? Um, what were the bullet points, the headlines? Oh, no, Root would come back in for me for sure, um, and and probably Stokes because I think if Cass is going to stay in this, I've said this through this series. If, mm. if Cass is going to stay stay in the team, and you want to use him as that sort of impact bowler with with Joffre as well, to have a fourth seam option there that you can maybe bowl a couple of power play overs with. That means the cast doesn't have to bowl on the power play. Going back to like the Plunkett role that you used him, if, if that's the sort of thing you're talking about, having a little bit of extra cover with Stokes in that side, I think provides England with even better flexibility. I also don't mind the thought of Stokes opening in, in white ball cricket. I know he's played a lot of really important innings when the back's been to the wall and stabilising sort of innings in, in that middle order. But he, I, I've always felt that he's a better top order white ball player. Definitely T20, better at the top as far as I'm concerned. And... And with Duckett, who's going to go out and play the way that he does, someone that can bat like Ben with that sort of technique but still score quite quickly, would I think would be a, a great foil at the top of the order as well. I suppose it depends on how hard you want to go in the power play, does it, as to the personnel that are at the top? 
Well, Duckett, like we said today, like we're in commentary today, Duckett didn't feel like he got out of second gear in the power play. And you look up and he's 33 off 33, striking at 100 anyway. You, you don't need many more than that in the power play. What, what you want up the top is someone that's got the, the technique to be able to get through difficult situations against world-class fast bowlers when the ball's moving a little bit. Duckett does that. Stokes can do that. Salt, to me, looks like he... Yes, he'll get you off to a fly like he did today, but you look at the risk that's involved in that, how many times the ball went past the outside edge. I mean... It, so I think a little bit more security, but still having that class to be able to score quick enough um, when conditions suit and against certain opposition, I think would be the right way to go for England. How many spinners might be needed because you've got Rashid and heaven knows what they do if something happens to him, but how many spinners do you think might be needed in those conditions? Yeah, you'd, you'd, well, just going by the way England have pieced together that, that position when Adil Rashid has, has not been available... Um, They've got. They've made it up. So they've they've gone deep with their batting, and they will piece together a level of bowling. I think it's a risky way to go because it leaves such a big hole when you take him out, or he gets injured, or for whatever reason hangs up his boots, which I don't think he's doing anytime soon. Um, so for me, it, it would have to be some form of of wrist spinner. But given how they've selected and the balance of the side that they, they will go with, I would say down the line, they they will piece it together with Bethel, Livingston, Jax, as opposed to one out and out front front liner. What have you learned about Australia? I've learned they've done things pretty tough in this tour. I mean, thinking back to the start of the T20s, they played the eight games, or well, <laughs> scheduled to play eight, didn't complete all eight games, but they haven't played the same team in any one of those games. So, you know, Scotland some, as well before, didn't you? Some of that, yeah. Well, with three games in Scotland before, yeah. Golf trip. It's nice, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've come all the way here, yeah. Might as well. Hit the links. I think they made the most of it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. But, no, look, uh, talking to some of the guys last night, like I had a bit of a feeling last night that there was a couple more injuries coming into this game. And, and they, were, they were talking about just how hard they have found this series. Um, you know, they started well when they, when they were pretty much had their full-strength team. They, we know they got off to a fly there, won the... First couple of games and then head misses and Zampa misses games three, which you, you take those two players out of any side, they're going to find it hard to win. And then obviously we get here today and the, the, the captain's out and their, their third um, seam is out of the side. and So they, it, it has been tough for them. They've, they've been sort of trying to piece together a, a team that has some sort of balance in it. And they've, they've done a, a pretty good job to do that. I mean, I must admit today, I, when, I, when I saw their team, I thought, geez, that looks, that looks light. If, you know, and although they won the toss... A little bit there for the bowlers. Once England got off to that, that start, I thought, how are they going to reel this back? I mean, they're going to be chasing a big score over here. But once again, they, they found a way. Um, the wicket looked like it, it got a bit better as well. It looked like it was better to bat on in, in the second innings. Um, so, yeah, I think... I, I, I mean, I don't know how much I've learnt for them as far as the what their best team is right now. And even, I mean, Champions Trophy is only not, not that far away. So, you know, Cummins would come back into that. Hopefully Green and Marsh are both fit and then... They'll have some selection issues to, to think about in their middle order as well. What do you see when you look at this Australian side? Well, Ed, not a lot of holes to pick into or to, or to take advantage of. Uh, again, we did the same thing with Australia uh, next door, sort of going through where you could take advantage of or where they will be left short come the Champions Trophy in February and March. But the, there's just continue added value every time somebody comes in. I think they've been absolutely outstanding, even though they came here to all. They did things really hard, you know, conditions were bowler friendly in a couple of the games and they lost a toss and found themselves batting first. So, like Ricky said, they, they just continue to find a way and it, you have to give credit to the structure and the environment that they currently have because people just keep coming in and contributing and causing headaches in many ways for the selectors, the captain, the coach, because at various different stages, yes, they've chopped and changed, but... Alex Carey, for instance, hasn't played since March, comes in mm. the level of hunger and desire that he showed in both of those innings. He could have easily walked away with two man-of-the-match awards, but it, it, it's just very impressive for a tour that's really stretched them. They've been brilliant. Yeah, the other, the other positives there, I think, for Australia, I thought Matt Short today, you know, he's had limited opportunities at the top of the order. He got two starts in the other games and didn't go on. There, there potentially is a spot opening up up there. You think back to the second T20 in Cardiff, Jake Fraser-McGurk gets an opportunity there, gets mm. 50 in that game. So there's some top order competition and, and looking at their lineup, I think Mitchell Marsh is probably his best side in this, in, uh, best position in this current one day team is probably opening the batting so he can get away to a bit of a flyer against the new ball before the spin comes on. But there, there's going to be competition there. Um, so which is always, which is always good. But there, as Owen said, there's a lot of quality there. And when the guys are coming in, Aaron Hardy, another one that made the most of his opportunities on this tour as well. So they've made the most when they've when they've got a crack at it. Well, Jake Fraser McGurk is one of the most talked about young players mm. coming through at the moment, and he can't get into the side. He, he played at whatever, 
two or three games up in, in Scotland, missed out a couple of times, and now he, he finds himself sitting on the bench. So if you look at the strength that they have sitting on the sideline, you know, things are pretty healthy for Australia. So what is coming through then? I mean, you mentioned Fraser McGurk. Um, Cooper Connolly played today. Beardman is another youngster that's over here. How would you say the stocks are, the young stocks coming through to replace? Because what, that last game you played one player under the age of 30? So yeah. at some point there'll be... English, a, English, maybe yeah. 29, I think he, yeah. he was, he was 29, the only yeah, one. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think things will look after themselves, I think, as far as regenerating this one day and T20 team is concerned, um, probably post this Champions Trophy. You know, someone like Mitchell Stark, you know, Cummins is not going to play... Forever, forever either. You know, Steve Smith's 34, 35 years of age, although he's still playing probably in the white ball game as, as, well, as, as well as ever. So they're, um, you know, fast bowling stocks. I was thinking about this last night when I heard about some of the injuries. You know, they've got like Scott Boland and Michael Nisa who bowl the house down every year back, back in Australia that, you know, could get a, 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 a game for Australia easily. So there, there's still enough on the, on, the, on the periphery that we haven't seen this tour that could, that could easily come in and fill a void. 